Hey Megs, it's great to have you on for the second time on my podcast. How are you doing? I'm great now. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> Just to remind the viewers, Megs lives out in, remind me? Gold Coast, Australia. Gold Coast, that's it, yes. Um, <laughs> so it's 30 degrees in Australia and it's five degrees in the UK. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. It's <laughs> sweaty here. In all good ways. If you're only listening to this and not watching it, Megs is looking all bronzed and golden and beautiful and sea swept. <laughs> Very much so. Um, right, okay. So the reason for getting Megs on for a second time um, is really to talk about the work that I'm now fully involved with, um, which is my own coaching career. And it's through a framework called Ultimate Contribution Uncovered, which I got involved with or I got invited to have a look at um earlier in 2020 and it came at the same time as being made redundant from my corporate job so i saw it as the universe doing its best to give me the biggest kick up the ass that i've needed for many years to actually step into self-employment and actually do something that i give a shit about at the end of the day because for many years selling software to businesses and accountants did not fill my heart you know, it was good when I, you know, when, when they really got it, when they wanted to improve their business, when they wanted to save money, and I knew that I was helping them to do that. But it's a slog and, and a, lot of, a lot of businesses just don't like spending money and they can't, they don't want to look at the bigger picture. All they care about is the pennies, at, you know, at the bottom. So, so yeah, so I got involved with this a few months ago and I've been doing my accreditation and, um learning and growing through it and I'm ready to launch this now as a, as a proper career and I thought it'd be great to get Megs on because Megs is a mentor and a, and a coach for me and um, I met Megs two about two and a half years ago I think it was and but Megs has already been doing this work for about six years so I thought it would be amazing because Megs has got a lot more experience in this uh, mm. field currently than I have at the moment so I thought it'd be brilliant to get Megs on <clears throat> to explain more about her journey, I think, because six years ago to now, I'm guessing things have changed for you, Megs, and, you know, things have developed and you've developed and you've seen loads of clients and helped impact loads of clients. And so I just thought it would be great for you to talk um, from your perspective, what this work is, what it means to you, how it's impacted the people you've and facilitated it with and reflected it back to and yeah so um if that's okay yeah over to you yeah oh where do I start probably at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> um look I've found that the biggest impact um in doing this work has been being an example of it first and foremost um, so I feel like I've really grown alongside uh, the work that we do. Um, and then to give you everyone an idea of what that work, if we call it work, actually looks like is helping people to uh, get to the core of who they are and put language around the things that are most important to them. So to uncover their core values, the things that make them uh, who they are but also have them operate in the world the way they do see the world the way they do and while those things are not uncovered um, it's not that they're not running our life it's just that we don't always we won't always find ourselves in alignment with them and then we can come into you know, all kinds of chaotic situations some of them in our control some of them not um, in any area and so what I've found is being able to uncover those things and then be intentional about aligning with them. Um, it's been it's a phenomenal impact on people. Um, so I started out in the space uh, working with people in their, who were getting started in their business. So people who were looking to create a business that they felt aligned with, a business that they um, could continue, you know, that they wouldn't want to stop, one that wouldn't feel like work. And to do that, it needs to be, in alignment with who you are so which is why we started there 
Um, and so the process over the years from, from then till now has refined and refined and refined. It's like anything, the more you do it, the more hours you have up your sleeve, the better you get, but also, um, you know, you have feedback and you have um, reflections from your customers and your members and things to be able to shift and change and tweak and get better. And one of the things that I always found the most profound was how people felt at the end of the, that part of their journey, right, with me, which was basically um, knowing themselves. Then, like, how, you know, then to try and go and actually implement that into their business was obviously the next steps. But just that point, at that point, how much um, that impacted them as a person for them to really see themselves from the inside out for the first time. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a really, really cool space to sort of sit. And you and I have been there, sit in with somebody on that last call. Um, and yeah, and what, what really struck me was how that having that knowledge and having that awareness not only helped them better be better in their business, but better in their life as well. Um, for the ones who embraced it, you know. Uh, and that's what leads me to where I am now. So um, working with Ultimate Contribution, we're very much, we've added a lot to the process over the years that basically is about embodiment. It's about really learning to embody those discoveries in a way that, you know, holds you accountable with yourself, but also with, you know, your facilitator through, you know, goal setting and things like that. Um, but really focusing on, in on the areas of life that matter to them and finding themselves becoming more and more aligned with, with those discoveries. So with their core values, actually having a vision of what they want their life to look like in all areas and then embodying their mission to be able to get to it and create it. Mm. Um, and so when I say that my biggest impact on me has been, I believe as a coach, one of the biggest things that we need to look at that makes you that makes you a why uh, you know a wise coach is that is that a word it's one of my <laughs> one of my values is wisdom um but you know in able to feel like you're um in integrity it's probably the right word with your work you have to live it and you have to be an example of it and walk your talk, right? It'd be like going to a fat PT. Like I wouldn't go and, and, <laughs> and employ a fat personal trainer because, well, you're kind of not, you know, yeah. walking your talk. So in that in that sense, that's where I'm getting at. It's like I've found that my life has just been turned upside down at times um, in all the good, in good ways and in challenging ways in order to stay in alignment and become at a more embodied version of, who I know myself to be. So yeah, it's it's impactful for sure. Um, I'm sure you've got some other things you want to ask me, but I think yeah. that kind of sort of sums up for me like the journey over the last six years um, to yeah. get to where I am now. I think, um, I mean, I went through it, well, as, you, as, as Megs is well aware, I started my journey and then waited months and months before I finished it. Mm -hmm. I let life get in the way. Um, it does. Which, which, you know, was, was annoying at the time, but it just sort of happened and, and, and it might happen for other people. But when I actually got to the end of my facilitation, if you like, and, and I really started to embody and really look at my core values, you know, some of my core values, <clears throat> excuse me, are honesty, freedom, spirituality, fun, friendship. They are all things that are so deeply ingrained in me that that are so important to me. And honesty is a funny one because when, when I went through my facilitation, um, I'd already uh, left my husband and, and we, we, I think we were divorced at that point. But when I think back to the majority of my adult life, I was being dishonest. I was being dishonest with myself. I was being dishonest mm. with the people around me. Um, and that was in, in as much as, and I was being dishonest with my ex-husband because I loved him, um, but I knew he wasn't the one for me. But I, mm -hmm. I took all of the factors around me, my age and everything else, and the fact that we were best mates and there was enough boxes ticked and all that 
kind of crap that we all do. Um, mm -hmm. And I made the decision to go for it. And, and I knew it wasn't the right decision, but I made myself believe it was the right decision. And it wasn't until um, being a year into being married and, and a chance um, time with a, an acupuncturist who just qualified. And, and I've shared this a couple of times in my podcast, you know, she basically called me out on it and said, you're deeply unhappy. And I was just like, what do you want about? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she had to say it two or three times for the sledgehammer to crack me and for the tears to fall. And it was in that moment that, there was, I knew there was no going back at that point. And the dishonesty had come out in my face, let's be honest, because I was suffering with uh, acne rosacea. And that's why I went to see the acupuncturist, you know, mm. to try and sort my skin out. She wasn't interested in symptoms. She was interested in mind, body and spirit. And she warned me before she said that to me. She said, you know, you can cut and run at this point if you want. And I was like, no, nope, I'm all in. Um, and then she told me, you're very unhappy. Um, and that was the start of the rest of my life. And, and up until that point, I'd been lying to everybody, but more importantly, lying to myself, you know? And honesty is like my main core fucking value. Mm -hmm. What is all that about? What is all that about? So going through the facilitation for me, um, and, and honesty was just there all the time, do, 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 apart from love that me and Meg's had a battle about, but. Um... <laughs> we all value love, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> um, Everything is love. Yeah, and um, that was kind of hard to swallow actually, for me being, mm. being such, and another one of mine is authenticity. I pride mm -hmm. myself on being honest and authentic. And I wasn't being either, you know, and that was a bit of a bitter, bitter pill to swallow, but in retrospect and being kind to myself, at least I did something about it. And at least I acknowledged it and at least I accepted it. And at least I had the courage in the end to be honest with my mm. husband at the time and told him how I felt, which not only set me free, but set him free to go on and do what he's done. Um, so yeah, and, and, and then sort of building yourself up, well, for me anyway, personally, building myself back up from that place, which was, um, I don't know, about eight years ago. It's allowed me to step into who I am and start to really understand all of my other core values, you know, and like my purpose statement is, I still haven't learned this off part, but is to selflessly give others the love to confidently and respectfully know their value so that they feel joy and are empowered to make a fulfilling difference. And I know, Powerful. yeah, and I know that I've done that all my life, although I was called out on that uh, a few months ago um, with my partner actually. And um, mm. we talked about the old times when we were in a band together, that's how we met. And uh, I didn't exactly pull my weight in that band um, Matt was very much the driving force, the one that said, we've got to do this, we've got to do that, you know, we've got to post all these bloody mail shots out, we've got to do it. And, and I was kind of, oh, all right, do we? Okay. You know, I was happy to sort of rock up, do some songs, write some songs, do the gigs, but I wasn't really charging for, although I did get us a gig in London that did get us spotted by RCA Records. So that's my, well, I did that. Um, but anyway, so and, and he, he basically says, you know, he, he couldn't quite square that off based on past and, and also based on something that had happened when we first started seeing each other. Since we've been together, we've been together now, getting on for eight months, he has said to me on multiple occasions, I had no idea. He, he says, you keep that side or he, I, you kept it hidden from me. You're so caring, you're so this, you're so that. He said, I just didn't even know that that was there. And, and mm. I thought, oh, that's interesting because I didn't think I did keep it. But I think, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like, you don't want to, I do these things naturally, but I don't talk about them. What, what, what well, most you? of us don't know about them. Yeah. That kind of brings us back to the work, right? There's... It's not that it wasn't important to you, to be honest. It's just that you didn't know that. 
until mm. you need it. Mm. And it's the same with our purpose before we have language for things. We don't, we don't actually, we haven't uncovered it, right? Until we, until we do that, go through this discovery and do this, that's why I believe everyone should do it, where they actually uncover what is there that they don't see. It's only once it's visible and conscious and, and we have language for it, right? Which is why we focus so much on how we language the vision and the mission and how we language even the purpose for that work. It's, it's separate to what we do, but aligned with it. And giving language to our frames of reference and our values, it allows us to be more intentional, you know. And then, then we are going to get called out when we're not living in uh, and breathing those things because we've stated that that's who we are. Yeah. And so, kudos to him for calling you out on it. What a man! <laughs> like he wants you to be your best, right? Yeah. And so do I. And so you need to have people around you who are going to be able to call you out because you're not always going to be perfect at the end of the day we want to be uh, I would love to sit here and say that I'm always in alignment with my parents <laughs> I can tell you I am not <laughs> but I do own it when I'm not and I get back in a line and, and things don't go well when you're not so you know it's uh it's on us at the end of the day but yeah I feel like that's everything you said then um is just evidence that you needed this work in your life Ooh, yeah um it's funny because he called me out on it again last night we ended up in a conversation I didn't want to be in last night but um with every with all the stuff that's going on in the world and the different theories that are flying around and the fact that we're all prisoners pretty much um mm. but a lot of us are I know Max you weren't in lockdown I don't think you're still in lockdown are you I had four weeks, uh, around four weeks of what I would call the bit, the worst sort of it, sort of thing. But no, um, we've been pretty free. We've been very lucky. Yeah. Um, just kind of numbers cut back in places and things like that. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's worse in some places around the world and, and it very often comes up, you know, now the vaccines are being pushed on people and all that. And I'm very passionate and very... Um, uh righteous about what's going on and and in fact i had the same conversation with my son um, uh, a couple of days ago because we ended up in a very heated discussion over sunday lunch and um the red wine didn't help i'll be honest but mm -hmm. um you know my son took umbrage i i feel very much one way my son feels he wants to stay in his own little bubble. He's 21. Mm. He doesn't want to know about all the crap. He just needs mm. to keep himself uh, anxiety free, doing doing what he does, you know. And 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 I think the trouble is, what I've realised certainly over the last um, two or three months. And Matt called me out on it again last night. And he said, "Well, you know, you, you say you're doing it because you care about people, but you're not respecting somebody else's viewpoint." Mm. And and actually, one of my um, core values is respect and mm. um and I was like I know I can be polarized and I know I can be bullish it's only because it's really weird it's like I know it to the core of my soul what I what I believe anyway right it doesn't mean that somebody else believes it but what I believe I it's in the core of my soul and and I you know half of me wants to be marching through London but the other half of me wants to be keeping my vibes high and you know all that lovely stuff mm. just being who I am and I'm so sort of stuck in the middle um but having the conversation with Jake the other day and having a conversation with Matt last night and I've been here before by the way I've had these conversations before and I'm like mm. yep yep get it I'll stop yeah I'm, I'm sorry you know I need to be more respectful but Matt will call me out on it every time. He's not going to sit there and let me get away with anything. So, um, yeah, it happened again last night. And, and as I say, respect. And I do respect. And But it's so hard for me on this particular subject. It really yeah. is. It yeah. really is. Because it feels like people just are accepting this party line that isn't actually, in my opinion, mm. the truth. But I have to be, you know, he... I've taken a step back 
like you say, you've got to be in alignment with who you are and respect is one of my core values and I need mm. to respect others' opinions and shut up. And he did say to me, he said, look, I'm not telling you to, to say nothing. You know, you're entitled to your opinion, but so are we. So yeah. just be respectful of that. So yeah, it's happening. I think too. Yeah, it does happen. And some things are going to feel more important to you than others. And, and, and what I mean by that is sometimes one value in one particular area or around one particular, sometimes just one particular person. Uh, we lean on it too heavily and then we forget the others and we get out of balance yeah. and then we start that's being it. out of alignment with everything else exactly thank you and so that's actually yeah that's actually what I think that that's what's happening there is you know you feel so strongly about the inauthenticness for want of a better word <laughs> uh, I think I made that up but you get me um, you know that's out of alignment for you it's not what you believe is really happening you're very spiritual so you you feel it in your bones there's another value of yours but you you drop some of the others to lean too heavily on those there and then you get out of balance and that's why we uncover 10 right that's why we don't just go oh here's your top three important things stay in line with those and your life will work no 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 <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's what kept me in my marriage you know i one of my values is loyalty yeah and i I have stayed in places and in relationships and in in areas or jobs for one you know that, that haven't served me. Yeah. Spaces that haven't served me because I'm so loyal. Yeah. And uh, I don't like to disappoint people, but at the end of the day you have to be loyal to yourself first. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's really important to keep a, your eye on all of them and not lean too heavily on one. But yeah, I hear you. I hear you, definitely. Yeah, because loyalty is one of mine as well. And I remember us having this conversation because <clears throat> I saw it as a, a negative because it like you it kept me in jobs too long. It kept me, um, I don't know what it was. Well, I guess it was loyalty in my marriage. You know, I was with, with him for 12 mm. years all in all. And it was tough to walk away, you know, with all the guilt mm. that goes with it. Um, but definitely an element of loyalty um, with that and and Mel and Mel I was going to just say just before we get on, on to a new topic with everything you were saying about what's happening in the world I feel like there's so many people that are lost mm. that don't that's not that they necessarily agree with what's happening but they just don't know who they are in order to navigate their way through the chaos that is literally unfolding at a global scale uh, and so I think right now more than ever um, people's lives feel like there's so many elements of it that we can't control work is compromised you know kids are not being able to go to school like all the things not being able to see family like all our values are being tested most of us don't know what they are so we don't know what's being tested so it's just so chaotic there's no order and I know that for me and you would know now yourself um, doing this work that the way I bring order back to my life is through aligning with my values always come back to that when I find myself you know being triggered by something um and so I feel for those people I feel for many many people and it just it makes me super passionate about what we do yeah thank you bring this work forward thank you for that reminder actually and I think um I had uh, Dr Jazz on the podcast um the other day it's not published yet but we did an interview and, and he was saying him and his wife look at those core values every day and that's not something I've been doing. I mean, they're, they're there on my wall. And actually what I started yesterday was, because I love Photoshop, um, I'm, I'm basically creating my own, I don't know whether it's going to be a canvas or a, or a print or whatever, I'm not sure, but it's a beautiful representation, you know, words. Or, or, yeah. And I can't wait to get that finished and up there. And because it's going to be a beautiful thing to look at, not just black text on a white piece of paper, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, well, I have mine framed on my desk, as you know. Yeah. That's where I do my work. <laughs> so um, when Dr. Giles said that, I was like, yeah, I haven't been doing that. I haven't been doing that. And even if I have been doing it, I've not been really in 
embodying it, you know, like thinking about the conversation I had last night, not being respectful to somebody else's opinion, um, allowing the inauthenticity and my drive for honesty to outweigh everything else. Mm. Um, I hadn't quite figured that. So thank you yeah. for that. Thank you for that. And thank you to Dr. Jazz for reminding me that I need to keep embodying, you know, keep looking, keep embodying. Yeah. Well, our body doesn't lie. Yeah. Right? It, there's so much technology in our emotion, in the body. You know, I use the word technology um, because it's just something that I've picked up from one of our other chiefs or one of our other mentors. But, uh, you know, when we get triggered or an emotion just is suddenly there, uh, it's, a good, it's a good place to go straight to your value. <laughs> what, what value is being triggered here? What out of alignment? What just pulled me? Something important just pulled you in a direction and, and triggered that emotion. Otherwise, it wouldn't matter and you wouldn't be feeling emotional about it. Yeah. And so embodiment really is just getting to know the triggers within your body. And I actually know the feeling in my body when I'm out of alignment with one of my core values, which is um, acknowledgement. It's one that I do struggle with. It triggers me a lot. Um, but I've got, I'm really focused on it. I've been focused on it for the last three, four months now and just really paying attention to when that comes, like when I get triggered, it's usually something to do with that and just taking back my power around that, you know, we just hand so much of it over to chance and to, and, um, and to our emotions and really they're just there to let us know something's not quite right, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I think, I think um, for the purposes of this podcast, um, I think we've talked quite nicely actually about how core values, when you know what your core values are, can be a real, can be so powerful in maintaining your alignment and, and maintaining that you're on the right track. You know, last night I definitely yeah. wasn't because I had this horrible gnaw in my stomach and yeah. Um, but you're right, you don't, you know, I knew honesty was very, uh, and authenticity was very, very dear to my heart, but I didn't fully know the rest of my core values until we went through the process. And, and like you said, most people don't. And if you don't know them, when you're feeling like shit or you're feeling out of alignment or you're in another job that just doesn't float your boat, you haven't quite made the connection that, well, I'm not living in integrity with who I am, you know? Um, mm but I've got to pay the bill. So I'll just keep doing another shit job after shit job after shit job. So or I, I don't want to be alone. So I'll stay. Don't want to be alone. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of people stay in relationships for the, all of the wrong reasons, you know, um, yeah. as both included. So, hmm. so in terms of, for the listeners, if they're, you know, if this is resonating for them, what would you suggest would be, I mean, obviously, me and you are facilitators for ultimate contribution. It would be amazing if they wanted to come and find out more. But what would you say would be a good, I don't know, maybe a first step for somebody that sort of sat there thinking, well, I know I'm not happy. I know whether it's the relationship, whether it's the career, whether it's something else. What would you sort of say would be a good thing to do next if there is such a thing? Do you know what I've always found really powerful, Mel, is journaling. Um, just writing down what's there doesn't even have to make sense, but just act. And I still do it now. It makes a little bit more sense now because I kind of have a bit of a structure to it in relation to my values, but, um, but just writing down what's there so that you get it out of your head. Um, it, it kind of gives you a bit of, it brings order to the, to the chaos that's ensuing at the time. Yeah. Um, but in terms of taking action, like just, I would recommend getting in touch with you, <laughs> obviously. Um, but before that, like actually just asking themselves um, the question, like the question, well, what is important to me? You know, and just contemplating that um, because it's hard to answer on your own. Mm. Um, because we we will justify everything as humans. We don't want to be wrong. We don't want to, you know what I mean? 
like yeah. we don't we don't want to see what's necessarily see ourselves as wrong and not that we're I don't like the word wrong but um we look externally naturally right we're we're instinctually we look externally for what's what we can fix when really the answers are all internal and it's that uncovering that that I've found is the most powerful thing to do. So I, as a first step, I would just stop looking externally and start looking internally. And naturally they're gonna wanna find somebody to help them answer those questions. And they're here on your podcast. So yeah, they're in the right place. That's wonderful actually. Um, I, think, I think the hardest thing is to admit that you've made a mistake. If there is such a thing as a mistake, because we take decisions through life some of them turn out great, some of them don't. Some of them we know we're making a bad choice, some of them we don't. And <clears throat> that, that acknowledgement, to use one of your core values, hmm. that, like you say, you write, you put it down, when you, when you say it out loud or when you write it down, you can't take it back. And right. to be honest with yourself, it is quite hard when you're feeling stuck or trapped because mm-hmm. You just want to brush it under the carpet. Well, there's nothing I can do about it anyway. And if I actually take that step to write that or say it, then you know you can't go back. But if you are sat here feeling the pain of it all, feeling confused, whether it be a lack of focus or direction or knowing deep down in your heart that you need to change something, just know that we all have the power within us whether you believe it right now when you're listening to this or not, but you do, you have the power to do anything. You know, I was shitting myself before Mm. I told my husband I didn't love him anymore because I had all of the worries of, you know, losing the house. I thought I was going to have to move in with my mom, which was like not what I wanted to do. Um, I wasn't earning much money at the time either. And I was like, how the hell am I going to support, you know, me and my son and, and all of that sort of stuff and every reason under the sun not to do it. Mm -hmm. But I just couldn't, I couldn't take the lies anymore. And I had to be true to me and I had to be, I had to be true to him and I had to release us all from it, you know, from this bloody bubble. And, um, and it was so empowering. It, you know, it was difficult, but it was so empowering. Mm -hmm. And I've become an even stronger person as a result of that. And I hope an, an even better person. Um, I'm more of an example to my son, actually, because he might not agree with all my uh, thoughts, but uh, all my beliefs, but he actually did say to me the other day, as much as we were discussing, you know, that heated conversation we'd had over lunch, he said, mom, I do actually agree with a lot of what you say, which was really nice to hear. Um, So it's, yeah, it's being an example to your kids and to those around you, if you're being true to who you are, then they will see that. No matter how polish you might be from time to time. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, and yeah, Megs is right. You know, if you want to talk to anybody, you could talk to either of us, you know, Megs is in Australia, I'm in the UK. So if you're listening in Australia, Megs is there. And if you're listening Mm -hmm. in the UK, I'm here too. So, um, and I'll put stuff in the show notes as well, but my website is almost finished. It's not quite finished. My website is malclarkcoaching.com and Clark has an E. Um, mm. Obviously, you've got the podcast. Um, I'm on Facebook um, as Mel Clark Coaching. I'm on Instagram as Mel Clark Coaching. So there's loads of ways you can get in touch with me. And my web, uh, sorry, my email is mel at melclarkcoaching.com. Um, where, what, have you got a website yet, Megs? Is it up and running? Yeah. Cool. I do. Uh, yes, it's quite simply megangibson.com. <laughs> hey, that is simple. Um, well, somebody's got melclark.com and I approached her years ago for it and she's still done nothing with it, but anyway. Um, so, um, so yeah, megangibson.com and I'll, I'll put all that down the bottom and you can find Megs yeah. on Instagram and you, and you can find Megs on Facebook as well. Yeah, all the links are on my website. So that's probably the easiest place to go. Cool. Direct cool. you from there. And, and both of us, offer, yeah, both of us offer free calls to have a, an initial conversation and see where you're at with things. And there's no pressure at all. Um, and it could be the first step for you to change the rest of your life. How good would that be? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. 
Well, thanks again, Megs. It's been ace having you on. Um, and um, well, I'll, I'll see you soon, no doubt. Oh, you will. <laughs> you don't get away from me very easy. <laughs> Even all the way over there. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't wait for the day we can actually meet when this madness has all stopped. So um, oh, yes. that, that will be cool. All right. Love you and uh, see you soon. You too, dear. Bye. Bye.